see the two people in pilot uniforms, and I know that we are wrong about the pilot at table nine. But if everybody knows the same thing that I do, then I lose my advantage. From this point moving forward, I need to keep things to myself. These participants are getting on my nerves. Why would you self-sabotage so obviously? So you'd rather people be sent home than through cheating than for them to just get the quizzes wrong on their own. Make that make sense? Anyway, hey there, thanks for stopping by, it's Valerie. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe, click the like button, turn on the notification bell for when I upload new videos, share, and definitely leave a comment. In this episode, I'll be reviewing The Mole, season two, episode four. So obviously everyone has taken their fortune cookie and then they start with the 20K to sort of reveal who had the 20K and uh, who had the exemption. And given how Tony has been messy, I thought people were going to say Tony, but actually they were able to sniff out Ryan. So she was taken out with her exemption and then they went to the 10K and it was a bit hit and miss because people were nervous as to who has the 10K. I'm actually disappointed in Sean because he's a undercover cop but the fact that they were able to sniff him out and know that he had one of the exemptions doesn't make sense to me it's a mystery Muna tried her hand but they were still able to sniff her out and know that she's the other person with the other you know exemption which then left Diana, melissa michael and q and i melissa they were able to quickly sniff her out as well she's a poker player and it's like how can you be a professional poker player and yet people amateurs are able to sniff you out that you are one of the people with exemptions but michael they weren't michael they weren't i think it's because diana was talking too much and michael decided to shut down and not say anything people trusted q because he kissed his mom's chain and you know they believed that and his leg was shaking and so in the end, they ended up picking Diana and, and Melissa. And so Melissa had an exemption. Uh, Diana had 5,000. So they lost 5,000, but they were able to gain 45,000, which brought their total up to 60, which is quite a good day at the office, given how they had recently lost over 35,000 the, the, the day before. So I'm very happy with this. And it was good team spirit and everyone was relieved. But then it also place suspicion on certain people in how they were able to deceive people like Muna. Now people are, are, are not trusting her because I think for religious reasons, they were trusting and thinking, oh, she would never lie. She would never lie. And now they've realized that actually she could be the biggest liars in the team. So obviously Michael is the only person that's exempted from taking the quiz. Everybody takes the quiz. I'm surprised. I am really, I, I'm so shocked because Melissa, is the person who got the green, the red light and it's like how how she should be able to read people if she plays poker she should be able to read people's tells how is she not able to sort of decipher who's a mole and who's who's the mole and who's not I, I, i'm disappointed in her i really am disappointed unless it was time for her to go and she was out unless they're constantly changing the mole i don't get it because i don't get how she she was caught out but anyway she is eliminated so she goes home and then they get to go to Kuala Lumpur oh, it looks amazing it looks amazing I hope I visit one day um and so they all get you know a room in a five-star hotel Ari comes on the screen and he tells them that you have a choice you can either see someone's audition tape or you can choose not to but if you're going to see the tape it's 5,000 and everybody ran for it everybody ran for it because you had Sean Nish and um and tony want to see hannah's tape because for tony this is someone he's having feelings for so he wants to make sure she's not playing him whereas the other guys just wanted to know is she as ditzy as she makes out or there's more to that and sadly she described herself being the mole working the way she is working so now it makes them all suspicious i think these tapes are not 100 percent genuine i think they're throwing people off yes there's sprinklings of the truth but i think most of it is lies um next up we have um Diana chooses to watch Muna. Am I, do I think it's a good idea? Yes, it is. This is one of the best ideas because she was able to decipher that, yes, she's a Muslim lady, but she's not 
hundred percent, you know, very truthful, always going to toe the line, you know, very meek. And she actually said this, you know, audition tape. And I was like, this is very good information to know. This is very good information to know so that you know who the mole is. If she is working that way, then fine. Uh, with Hannah, she wanted to see Michael and Michael spoke about the fact that, you know, he was in the closet for a long time. So he's able to sort of hide his true character away from people. And it's like, mm, okay, if that's what it is, then I get it. And I understand it and I can, you know, but I don't think Michael is a mole. Could he be more a mole? No, I think he's just very laid back. And so I don't think he would make a good mole. So then you have Muna, Michael, and Ryan. They choose to watch Sean. And they find out that he used to be an undercover cop because he's got a tattoo. So they were questioning whether he was in the military or whatever. He sold himself as a stay-at-home dad. And so for them to find this out makes you wonder, is he sort of giving away inaccurate tells? Because in order to stay undercover, he has to have played those characters very well. So is his character going to be this stay-at-home dad who doesn't know what he's doing who's got a lot of tells that way they can't tell that he's actually the mole i wonder how they're going to use this information the three of them never thought i'd say this never thought i'd say this but i've changed my mind i've changed my mind because every single person went and watched the movies all bar q q didn't go so my question now is did q not go because he's the mole or is he really serious about saving money? Because every other person went to watch somebody else's movie except for Q. My question is, why did Q not go? Is he the mole? Hmm. It, it would make sense though. Because if you're the mole, why would you want to go and watch anybody else's movie? Because you know what you're doing. I, I don't want to believe he's the mole. I, I, my mind is sort of scrambled. I don't want to believe he's the mole. Anyway, Ari tells them that they're going to a dinner, dinner party and, you know, everybody needs to go and change and they all change into weight stuff uniforms. So they meet up with Ari who tells them that they're going to be divided into two teams. There's going to be people that are working at the back of the house and people that are working at the front of the house. And so they need four at the back who will be going through the pictures of every guest that's there and will be sort of relaying messages to the staff in the front who are the waiters. And apparently in the crowd, there's three people with $10,000 each. And of those three, the amount will... Um, the total amount will come up to 30,000. So they choose to, they sort of assign themselves in teams. And you have Sean, Michael, Muna, and Diana um, working in the back. It makes sense for Muna to work in the back because of obviously they're serving alcohol. And I don't think Muslims drink alcohol, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and then in the front of the house, you have Tony, Ryan, Nish, Hannah, and Q. And I thought Tony and Hannah would want to split themselves up. That way they can watch both teams and see who's the mall or decipher who's the mall, unless they are the mall. Anyway, so as they're working, you have Michael keeping a, a, his eye on Sean. And I think Sean noticed this, that, oh, Michael is watching me. So he decided to throw Michael off by sort of sabotaging one of the pictures that they had turned and, and sort of hid the correct picture away. And it's like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? So you want him to get an answer. So you're trying to eliminate the competition by getting him to give wrong answers in the quiz. And then he's sent home. I don't get it. I, I really don't get the smart playing that. I, I, I don't get the sense. So they go through every waiter sort of tells them they start off with the wines and there's some people with red wine, some people with white wine and the people with the cash set, uh, ordered red wine. So they had sort of um, their orders of what they ordered and whether they were bringing cash donation or, or check donation or money transfer. So they end up with about 20 people who have ordered red wine. And so it's sort of just a process of elimination, more or less. I'm so confused. I don't get how people would rather lose money than just have the correct answers. Yes, I understand the mole, but this I don't get is now making me think that maybe Sean is the mole. He is the mole because he could be hiding in plain sight and making obvious mistakes that will make people question themselves as to whether they are seeing what they're seeing or maybe they're just imagining things because he took down the picture of the doctor. So when you had Q giving the instruction and the description of the doctor, they couldn't find the picture of the doctor on the board because 
that had already been removed by Sean. And Sean said he removed a random picture and it's like, it's too much of a coincidence. It's too much of a coincidence for you to pick the right picture and hide it for everybody else not to see. And then with the pilot, you had Hannah actually notice that um, Ryan sabotaged them and yet she didn't say anything. And it's like, does she really like this guy or is she using him to get answers so that she can win? Because she said at the end of the day, it's either going to be myself or Tony that wins. We cannot win as a pair. So there are certain things that I'll have to keep to myself. And it's like, Tony seems like a smart guy. I hope he is aware of this. Or it could be the two of them are the mole. And the, instead of the producers having one mole, they've decided to have two people to sort of throw off the scent because last season they had one. So maybe this season they've decided to use people as a couple because... The way they're acting is too lovey-dovey and it makes it questionable given how soon they, they've they they've only been together for a couple of days or a couple of weeks. So for them to be that all PDA and stuff, it's a bit questionable in my opinion. It's sad that they only managed to raise 10,000, but at least they have 30-something thousand, which makes sense given the fact that eight people lost the money when they all went for the movie. So they lost at least about 40K when they went to watch the movies of each other's auditions. Um, they then meet up with Ari and so they are then told to, there's no exemptions this time. So they have to go and sort of take a quiz to find out who thinks who is them all. And um, before they do that, they have conversations in groups and you have, you know, Michael eventually owning up that he did watch Sean's movie and he knows Sean is an undercover cop or was an undercover cop. And he says the reason why he thought something might be off is because though, though Sean was talking about being married, he wasn't wearing a ring. And so they sort of agree and Sean decides he's going to use this to his advantage to try and get Michael out. And it's like, Michael should question, why would it be so easy to find out all this information about this man? This man is playing you. I don't get how you can't see that. And I hope, I hope, I hope he's able to pick up on it before it's too late. Anyway, um, they then meet up with, with Ari, take the quiz. And you have Hannah. Tony is busy bragging that he and Hannah are sharing information. Whereas Hannah is saying there are certain things that she's keeping to herself because at the end of the day, she knows only one person can win the prize. And it's like, seriously, how much money is it that you're willing to sacrifice someone you say you've got a connection and you're romantically attracted to or you're romantically linked to? Let this be a lesson for Tony. Let this be a lesson because he's playing himself and he doesn't realize it. So this makes me question whether Hannah is actually the mole, because why would she play someone she has feelings for instead of playing the rest of the group? But anyway, I digress. Um, so they do start revealing, you know, the participants to see who actually is the mole. And you have Nisha's got green, Dana's got green, Michael's got green, well, Hannah's got green, so we'll see who else has green next time. Thanks, guys, for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And click the link in my video to watch my review from episode 3. Bye, guys.